I'll start out. My name is Bo Rodenbo. I'm an attorney for CZS Development LLC and Development Company LLC, the proponent of the Hutchison Court rezoning proposal. And I'm here tonight with my associate, Jamie Lauderbilk. And I'm also here tonight with Tori Small, who is the engineer for the project, and Raymond Hunt, who is the project manager for the project. Now, I will start off by giving you an overview uh, with a slide presentation of the new proposal that we first presented to you back at the meeting on June 28th. And then we'll open it up uh, for questions. Anybody who wants to ask questions? Uh, unlike the last meeting, we'll try and go or skip around the room to pick out people so that we're not going down one side or the other. Uh, and uh, we would ask that people try and give everybody an opportunity who wants to make a comment. So if you would try and limit your comments to one, one question or a follow-up question and, instead of trying to dominate the, the question and answer period. And we'll, we will try and wrap this up about 8.30. And then I understand that, the, that uh, the neighbors here have asked to remain in the room after that to have some further conversation after that. Bo, can I ask a quick question? Is, yes, sir. Is there online access to this meeting right now? i got someone out of town asking me that. Uh, no, there is not. Okay. That uh, I'm aware of. Got it. So. The, the question was, is there an online access to this meeting for people who are out of town? And the answer to that is not that, not that I'm aware of. All right. I would also ask that, that uh, we we all treat each other with respect and be respectful in in, in the questions that that are asked. And uh, we will certainly try to be respectful in responding to those questions uh, to folks here in the room. Without further ado, let me go ahead and turn to the presentation of what Hutchison Court is. We presented a, a proposal to you for a conditional use REM8 rezoning for Hutchison Court back on June the 28th. This is a new proposal that we uh, refiled as a planned unit development rezoning, uh, which required us to withdraw our earlier rezoning request in order to first file a unified development plan for the city of Greensboro in accordance with the Greensboro Land Development Ordinance in order to refile as a PUD rezoning request. This, this rezoning request, like the original one, however, is a conditional use request, which means that uh, it, it, it is not just the restrictions that are placed on a planned unit development in um, the Land Development Ordinance, but that it has additional conditions that the that, uh, CZS Development Company has agreed to follow if the rezoning is, is approved. So let me first uh, look at the first condition, and these conditions, by the way, were set forth in the notification brochure that was mailed. We attempted to try and mail that to everyone within roughly a half mile radius around the Hutchison Court property. There may have been some people either a little inside or a little outside that line we try to generally follow streets as opposed to part, parts of lots and that sort of thing um, but uh, we we did mail that brochure out to everyone and these conditions that i'm about to go over as well as this sketch plan rendering uh, that's shown up here on the screen right now were included in that notification brochure and I hope you received a copy of it and had an opportunity to review it the sketch plan is uh, a preliminary sketch plan. It is not binding uh, at this point, uh, and indeed won't be binding until after the rezoning is either approved or denied and, the, and a site plan is submitted to the city of Greensboro for approval. Uh, the first condition that is outlined in the conditional use application that we've submitted for this PUD rezoning is no more than 22 attached townhome dwellings uh, on separately planted tax lots in a planned unit development that's subject to a declaration of covenants, conditions, and restrictions. So we've reduced the, the uh, density of this development from the 26 units that were proposed in the June 28 meeting uh, down to 22 units. And those, those 22 units, as were the in the original proposal, 
are being developed on. They are paired, as you see, uh, in uh, the townhomes are paired in duplexes, uh, but they are each platted on separately platted 20, 20, a total of 22 lots in the subdivision. And those 22 lots are all subject, like the lots in the village at Windsor Park, uh, which is another townhome development, which is adjacent on two sides. Not a Well, if you... <coughs> if you get correct. Get my shit correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, if, if, you, if you look at the original... If you look at the original uh, plat that was recorded for um, uh, uh, the, the village of Windsor Park, it refers to it as being approved under the townhome uh, provisions of the, uh, of the then uh, land development ordinance in the city of Greensboro. And they, are, they, are, they, like this development, are subject to a declaration of covenants, conditions, and restrictions that provide for the maintenance of the private roads, and the common areas within the subdivision by a homeowners association, which is the same thing that is proposed for Hutchison Court. And they also provide for the uh, maintenance, the exterior maintenance of the homes in that subdivision, as well as the grounds maintenance of the individual lots, not just the common areas, but the individual lots in that subdivision. That is the same thing that is proposed for this uh, Hutchison Court uh, subdivision. The other thing that you'll notice is uh, about this, uh, on this sketch plan, is that all vehicular access, this is the seventh condition in our zoning application, will be taken only from West Friendly Avenue. So there is basically a circular uh, traffic plan within the subdivision, which is a private road. Again, just like the, the village at Winter Park and similar to the Benfield development down at the corner of Holden Road and Friendly Avenue, in which there's also that is also served by a private road. Uh, and that access is, is solely back out to West Friendly Avenue that prevents traffic from this subdivision from going into the adjoining neighborhood. So unlike the village at Windsor Park, this doesn't, doesn't flow out into an adjoining neighborhood, in that case, the Windsor Park neighborhood, but rather flows directly into Friendly Avenue. Right, you turn to the next slide. The second condition set forth in our rezoning application is that each townhouse dwelling shall have a garage and take driveway access from a private street or drive. So if you uh, uh, were recall from the prior slide, all of those homes go directly and have their access exclusively into the private drive and then the interior of the development and all each townhome in the development will have a two-car garage uh, that's associated with the development. The building height shall not exceed 35 feet. That's provided in, uh, in, on the UDP. And in addition to that, this condition requires that, the, the, that uh, the townhomes be no more than two stories. Okay. Our fourth condition is that building facade material shall consist of no less than 70% wood, stone, glass, brick, and or cementitious material like OSB board or party board. Neither vinyl siding nor exterior insulation finishing systems or ether systems, uh, synthetic stuccos, commonly known, shall be used on the building sides. There may be vinyl materials uh, in, as a, is used in all modern construction as part of windows, doors, and trim products. The seventh condition is that the townhome facades will prevent, present a variety of architectural detailing, fenestration, and colors, and combinations of materials to differentiate the in individual units. Uh, the most important uh, design feature for us and the, uh, with the developer, uh, CGS Development Company, is that we would use a selection of, of uh, garage doors and, and entry features that are prominent. Uh, also important that the uh, <coughs> um, uh, entrances on the, uh, are, are on the front of the townhomes and not on the sides as they frequently are in lower end townhomes. This is uh, <coughs> more expensive, but it's also a far more attractive arrangement. We're trying to pay a lot of detail to the front entrances 
in the garage door since those are important design features. As to stormwater management, uh, there's been a, a lot of uh, discussion on social media that I've seen about a retention pond that we are required in this subdivision or any other subdivision that would now be approved in the city of Greensboro is required to have stormwater management such that you control the siltation running off of the site and you also control the initial rain, rain, rainfall falling onto the site. And so <clears throat> we, are, we are not proposing a retention pond as that stormwater management device. Instead, we're going to go with a grassed um, um, uh, bioretention cell or a landscaped bioretention cell. The, the photo in the lower right corner here is of a grass bioretention cell which is out at J.C. Park here in Greensboro. The other two photos are of stormwater bioretention cells that are landscaped uh, with plantings in the, in the bioretention cell. All, the common feature of all these cells is that they when, it, when there is rainfall, it traps the rain in the bioretention cell, which eventually filters into a stormwater drain in the bottom of the cell. Uh, but this is an attractive feature, unlike what you would see in a concrete retention pond at the Home Depot parking lot, for example. We're not, we don't have to deal here with acres of impervious surface draining into these, into these uh, stormwater features. And so, uh, we would prefer to use a bioretention cell that, of course, will be subject to engineering approval by the city of Greensboro. There's also been conversation that I've seen on social media about uh, the, the bioretention features being close to Friendly Avenue, uh, that the device is going to have to be close to Friendly Avenue because that's the way the land drains. If we try to put a bioretention cell in the rear of the project on the north side, for example, uh, it would it would have to the site would have to be completely regraded. We'd have to cut down all the trees, and we don't want to do that and to regrade it back to that bioretention cell. So any bioretention cell is going to have to be located at a low point on the property for for the water to drain into that property. This is this we think is an attractive way to to handle stormwater. It's also an advantage to the, to the surrounding community because we're controlling the silt running off of this site into these bioretention cells rather than into the storm sewer for the city of Greensboro and Friendly Avenue, which as you know, then drains into Lake Euphemia and the other lakes in, in, uh, um, in across the street on the south side. And as you know, this community has been in a battle with the city of Greensboro for what, maybe two decades over who was going to be responsible for uh, mucking out those those uh, lakes and ponds um, in, across the street. This will, this will reduce the amount of siltation and will trap the siltation coming off of this site going into the storm sewers in Friendly Avenue and then into Lake Euphemia and the other lakes south of uh, Friendly Avenue. Uh, <clears throat> this will also control flood water as well, which is another advantage to the neighborhood. I've seen some comments on Friendly Avenue on, on social media about people complaining about the amount of water coming off of Friendly Avenue uh, onto their properties on the south side of Friendly Avenue. These, these bioretention cells will control the, the water, the runoff from this site, won't do anything about what's falling on the Friendly Avenue, but we'll control the water coming off of this site. We may try and, you, you'll recall in the earlier slide that we have an open common area in the center of the development. Uh, we, we may try and, and put the bioretention cell in that open common area. Uh, and we also may try and put in more than one bioretention cell if that would enable us to save some existing trees on the site, and that sort of thing. All right, the fifth condition in our zoning application is perimeter setbacks that shall be at least 20 feet unless increased by the approved UDP, and the front public street setback shall be at least 35 feet. 
The sixth condition is that understory trees and shrubs in the type C buffer yard shall consist of all of at least 50% evergreen species to provide continuous screening. Evergreen understory trees shall have a minimum mature height of 15 feet and shall have a minimum height of 8 feet in installation. Evergreen shrubs shall have a minimum mature height of 6 feet and shall have a minimum height at installation of 3 feet. Uh, <coughs> Now, as far as, and we'll, we'll talk a, a little bit more about both those. The proposed details on the zoning, you will, you will see on this zoning map uh, that uh, uh, the villages at Windsor, which is located right here, the Hutchison Court site is where this black dot is. Villages at Windsor, the big, <coughs> excuse me, got away from the microphone. The villages in Windsor, uh, in, which is located a, a, around the north and east sides of Hutchison Court, is zoned R5, which is essentially the same zoning density as Hutchison Court. We also, uh, while this is a PUD uh, uh, rezoning, the, the density is at a level of, of uh, five units per acre, 22 units on a 4.40 acre site. Uh, <coughs> Uh, there are similar put, put developments in West Friendly Avenue and Hobbs Road. The Hobbs at Carroll development is also a put rezoning. And at the southeast corner of West Friendly and North Holden Road, you've got the Friendly Townhomes, uh, which are an RM8 rezoning. And then you've got the Villages at Winter Park, which is an R5 rezoning. The Hutchison Court uh, application essentially requests an R5 zoning. Uh, be in the same zoning density as the villages at Windsor Park. Now, as far as, as the details on the zoning density, uh, we've, we've included a quote here from the Brookings Institution, Institute uh, uh, publication back in 2019. Many single family neighborhoods could easily yield more housing and more affordable housing if land use rules allow general increases in density such as townhomes, two to four family homes, and small scale apartment or condominium buildings. This is, <coughs> this is a very gentle change in the zoning density. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the zoning density here is going from three units an acre to five units an acre, which is a, a change of about from a third of an acre to a quarter of an acre in the zoning density. And that, as I said earlier, is consistent with the uh, zoning uh, density in uh, the villages at Windsor. I recognize that the villages at Windsor has been uh, constructed at roughly th three units an acre. Uh, <clears throat> this, this is, we believe, the very definition of general uh, de density increase. Uh, the application condition is for a minimum of 35 foot setbacks from the, from the right of way of Friendly Avenue the setbacks within the uh, preliminary plans for, uh, sketch plan for uh, Hutchinson Court, however, are greater than that. There is one building, and could you, uh, Jamie, go back to the first slide? Sure. Okay. There it is. <coughs> As you see on this sketch plan, um, there is the, the duplex in the lower left corner that is the southwest uh, corner of the property. That, that first duplex is uh, about 45 feet back from the right of way of uh, Friendly Avenue. The remainder of the, the townhomes in Hutchison Court would be between 70 and 300 feet back from the right of way of Friendly Avenue. And so there are uh, many homes along Friendly Avenue with a comparable range of setbacks, that is 70 feet uh, from uh, the right of way of Friendly Avenue, including uh, the village at Windsor Park, which is, has four homes along the southern boundary of that development that back up to Friendly Avenue on, and are but 70 feet back from uh, Friendly Avenue. Similarly, in the Bedfield development at the corner of, of West Friendly Avenue and Holden Road. The, there are homes in the Benfield development that again 
back up to Friendly Avenue and are approximately 70 feet from uh, Benfield, I mean from uh, Friendly Avenue right away. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we believe that uh, this general increase in zoning density is consistent with the GSO 2040 comprehensive plan and with uh, the other requirements of the grant land development ordinance in the city of Greensboro specifically we believe that it meets the, co the requirements of the comp comp comprehensive plan by filling in Greensboro's framework with housing that affords shorter commutes, smaller yards to maintain rental opportunities, and access to quality mass transit promotes a more, and promotes a more efficient use of the land via this infill development. That is taken straight from the comprehensive plan. We also believe that it creates a great, great place that is looks inward on the development and is screened from both adjoining properties and from Friendly Avenue by lush landscaping. The developer is very, very clear in his objective of uh, uh, leaving as many existing trees and shrubs on this property uh, as, as possible in the development. And you can contrast what's already happened with this development, as you know, the three homes that were located on, on Hutchison Court property have been demolished. Great care was taken in doing that to demolish only the homes and not to take out any trees or shrubs other than the ones that were right up against the house, uh, the houses that were removed. You can contrast that with the development of the lots but a couple of doors down to the west on Friendly Avenue that where uh, a private party has purchased a couple of lots there, and as I understand it, Gary Job has been contracted to put in a, a very large home on that, that site, but in any event, as you can see when you drive by there, that, that, that uh, uh, property has been clear-cut, grubbed, and graded in preparation for that construction of that new home. Well, you can let Andrew talk if he wants to. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Huh? No. <coughs> we, 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 we have no plans to cut every tree down. We, in fact, we have, the developer has every, every uh, objective of trying to keep as many existing trees on the property as possible and then in the, in the course of construction to infill with more trees and uh, vegetation, shrubs, and so forth as we previously talked about in the earlier slides. So uh, there is, there is, we believe screening both from the adjoining neighborhoods, not by fences, but by by uh, vegetation that we believe will screen the adjoining neighborhoods, and we believe that the the view from from Friendly Avenue will be much as the view is today uh, from when you drive along Friendly Avenue. Uh, and there is, there is, by the way, a bus stop uh, already located on Friendly Avenue at the uh, southeast corner of this property. And we have been told by the city of Greensboro that they plan to locate a uh, bus uh, uh, shelter and bench at that loca the location of that bus stop as well. Uh, Thank you. So, um, all right. We believe that Hutchinson Court will offer beautiful single and, and two-story residences for empty nesters. We believe that Hutchinson Court will offer beautiful two, single and two-story residences for empty nesters and young professionals. As we pr said previously, the maximum for the two-story buildings will be no more than two th 35 feet tall. Uh, and uh, I will note, uh, again, uh, Jamie, would you return to the first slide, the site plan? And it's, diff it, it's difficult to see at this, this scale, but you may look back at your, the notification brochure that we provided to you. You can, you can see from the uh, um, building footprints for the townhomes in this development that we have um, um, uh, um, 
three uh, townhomes in this development, uh, lots eight, uh, which is at the northeast corner of the, of the development, lot nine, which is its opposite around the corner, and lot 22, which is at the, at the northwest, excuse me, the, those two are at the northwest corner, and then lot um, uh, 22, which is at the... Can you repeat that? Can you lower your microphone? All right. Use it. Okay. All right. So we have, we have three, um, three, uh, three homes in the, in, in the uh, development that are um, 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 wonderful single story uh, townhomes, lots eight and nine at the southwest corner of the, excuse me, northwest corner of the property, and lot 22, which is at the southeast corner of the property. We have uh, two homes that are primarily one floor with a second, second floor bedroom. Uh, those are uh, lots two and um, um, uh, 16 and um, uh, 18 in the, in, on, the, on the site plan. Uh, we have uh, three more homes that are um, 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 uh, two, or, excuse me, are, are two-story with no first-floor bedroom. Those are lots one and 15 and um, 17 on the plan. And then all the rest of the homes in the development will be two-story homes uh, with uh, first-floor bedrooms at least one first floor bedroom in the homes. So there's a, there is a mix of homes here. I think we'll go back, um, Jamie, to the uh, prior slide. There are a mix of homes, uh, home styles here. There are a mix, excuse me? Uh, that's better? Yeah. Okay, there are a mix of, um, there, are, there are, are a mix of, there we go. Uh, there are a mix of uh, home plans here. There are also, all, all units will have two car garages. All will face front uh, into the center of the development. All will be screened by lush landscaping around the perimeter of the development, both from Friendly Avenue and from uh, the adjoining properties. And Jamie, if you'll go to the next slide. You will, you will see that uh, we, are, we are using both the mix of evergreens and lush grasses and so forth uh, to try and create a lush experience here. And the, the zoning conditions, as I said previously, uh, require at least 50% of the uh, development, I mean, of the landscaping to be evergreen trees and shrubs. So they will provide adequate uh, uh, screening from the adjoining owners to the adjoining owners. That's our presentation at this point, and I'll now throw it open to, to questions. All right, let's start in the back over there with the turquoise. Um, yes, ma'am, you. Why is there an HOA if these are not owner occupied homes? They're rentals, is that correct? That, that, that is correct, but they could, they could be sold at a future date. So, we are, the, 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 the Greensboro Zoning Ordinance does not provide for uh, uh, rental or, or, or no rental other than there, there is a very limited zoning restriction now, as you know, on short-term rentals uh, um, um, of homes in Greensboro, but other than that, the LDO, you can't provide in the LDO for rental or not rental. You have to, we have to, we have to develop this development as if it could be sold, and indeed we, we want to preserve the right to be able to sell individual townhomes here. So, so as rentals, they'll have an HOA? Yes, they will have an HOA, and the only member of the HOA will be the owner of the townhome. Yeah. And then, can you put a percentage on the number of existing trees that you'll try to keep? Well, I can't. I know I can't put a percentage on the number of existing trees because it will 
it will depend on the on the development exigencies as we develop the uh, the townhomes on the property and what the city of Greensboro allows us to do uh, in, in that development. I can tell you that the objective of the developer is to try and preserve as many existing trees as possible. And as I said earlier, we intend to try and um, uh, break up the bioretention cells, for example, to preserve trees. All right, let's go in the back here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, earlier, you made a, a number of comparisons of Hutchinson Court with, uh, with Windsor Court, which is uh, zone R5. Um, is there a reason that, what's the reason that you're pursuing uh, PUD rather than R5? Well, we, because the PUD uh, gives us more flexibility with respect to setbacks and uh, that sort of thing that an R5 would do. Is, is it related at all to the fact that R5 allows single-family homes and zero lot-wide homes, but does not allow townhomes? Yes. Thought so. Yeah. All right, in the middle here, the black sweater. No, sorry. I'm, that's okay. Okay. Well, um, I have a question on parking. Right. As it appears, each of the homes has a driveway in front of it, in front of their houses, that there is their parking spaces. And they're very densely next to each other. Where is the overflow and the guest parking located at? Because if people are looking for extra parking, they're going to have to be going to the residential neighborhoods around to find parking. Yeah. No, we, 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 there would be no, no provision for people going around to adjoining properties. The parking would be on the in the driveways. There's a two-car garage, and then there's parking for two more cars in the driveway between the house and the garage. So there's no street parking. There's no street parking. There, well, there is. Well, you can park on the street. Yes, there is no off-street parking in parking spaces off the street, but on a private street, just like on a public street, you can park on the street. And there will be space. It is, it is wide enough. It is at least 24 feet wide, this street, which is a minimum width for residential streets. My neighborhood is like that too, 24 feet wide. Cars can park on it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Can an HOA say you can't do that though? Yeah. Yes, an HOA can say that you don't do that, but this HOA <laughs> won't say that. So will not be allowed to have parties if they're Jewish, they will not be able to have gatherings after someone dies or can't have families over for holidays. What will be the help for those families who are here, young people or older people, to get families together? They will be able to park on the private streets in the, in the, in the neighborhood. 22 homes during the holiday are not going to be able to do that. Is there anybody over here? Yes, sir. Well, I actually have two questions. The first one Can you stand up? I just want to try to I actually have two questions. The first one was about the bio cell. Speak oh, up, please. I'm sorry? Can you say louder, please? I was asking about the bio cell that they're using for retention of uh, runoff water. How often does that have to be maintained so that it will continue to do its job? In other words, if it fills up every two years or every three years, or do we have any information on that? Well, <clears throat> Generally, a bioretention device, whether it's a pond or a bioretention cell or a bioswale, needs to be cleaned up about every once every 20, 15 to 20 years. Okay. And then the other one, I think, was related to the question I heard earlier about the parking issue. How is that the 24 foot width I heard you say earlier? How does that work for emergency vehicles such as large ladder trucks or something that, like that? That is, a, that is a standard width for a residential street in the city of Greensboro. Okay. And in fact, uh, Tori, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that these streets, uh, this street layout has already been approved by the uh, city of Greensboro's um, transportation part. We've already shared the layout with both the uh, GDOT. It hasn't been officially approved, but we have shared it with both GDOT and FIRE, and we've made some uh, adjustments to it in specific areas. We have to um, have the garages set back at least 25 feet from the curb so that there's space for a car to pull up, and if an emergency vehicle is in the road making a turn, that they can still get by. There's software that uh, 
we put up the Greensboro's largest fire truck in that software and run it through and that goes in with our plans for review and they will make us make changes in specific specific areas um, I wanted to say also about the buyer retention cell the owner is required annually to do an inspection of the bioretention cell and to submit that to the city of Greensboro for approval. The city of Greensboro, up until about a month ago, was doing that for owners. It was supposed to happen once a year, and it wasn't happening once a year as the city was supposed to do it. So they've implemented a program now that the owners of the devices have to certify every year that there's been an inspection done by a qualified professional and any maintenance items need to be taken care of. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go here to the manager's chat. I live at 4008 West Friendly. I know I have a lot of problems with this. Number one, you're not talking about the drainage that I worked with with Mrs. Sabah. She has two collection chambers in that yard to collect water because of it draining from the back. She has one in the front and she has one in the back. The one in the back is because the city has taken the entire cul-de-sac behind us and put it through to my yard and then they put a huge pipe across my yard that drains into this property. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> we are aware of that. Okay, but you said you're not going to have anything back there, so what are you going to do about all that? We're not, we're, we don't anticipate putting a new bioswale back there for the runoff from are this side. Are you going to leave the collection chamber there? We, we will, sorry, I can't see you. <clears throat> Tori, will you put the microphone? Yeah. Can y'all hear that better? I guess so. Um, so the, there is a storm drainage system that runs through the site. Uh, that off-site water will continue to move through the site. If possible, we would like to put our road on top of that so that we don't need to relocate it. If the grades don't work, we may need to relocate a portion of that so that it falls within the road. Um, we will not be putting that water into the bioretention cell. That water would continue to move through the site like it does now. All of the new impervious surface that we add to the site, gravel, sidewalk, roads, buildings, that will all drain in a separate stormwater collection system that would drain to the bioretention cell and be treated and released from the site at the same rate that it is currently being released. So it's held in that bioretention cell from both a quantity and a quality treatment. You're ignoring something that's really significant in front of that pipe that goes across my backyard, and they had to dig out to make sure it drained that way. All the water in front of that comes out between our two lots, and there's a, and it was in the, the topo of the um, of the survey you all did, and I suspect that's going to be covered up. If that's covered up, all that water would be in my basement. I got 2,400 square feet in that basement, 3,300 in the second floor, then a third floor. And my three-story house is 35 feet tall, so this, these are tall buildings. I don't know how you get 35 feet out of two, two stories, I really don't. Um, so on the stormwater issue, we will certainly ensure, and the plans will be reviewed and approved by the City of Greensboro, that we are not backing water up onto adjoining properties. So if there's an inlet there or a, a swale, we would need to go ahead and pick that up and put that into either the existing storm drainage system on the site, or we would put in a new storm drainage it system to pick it up. Drain that into something across the it has to go out into the street. Okay. And that's the fight that Mrs. Sabah and me had with, with, that, with the city people that came out. And what they had to do is lower the drain of the street to make sure it took that water. Mm -hmm. and now the second thing I want to bring up, you're talking about 35 feet off the street for that unit. <coughs> my house is 112 feet off, off the street. Yeah. That means this is going to be all in my front yard, the entire first building and part of the second building. How can that possibly look good to anybody? Uh, the minimum setback is 35 feet, and it will be set back farther than that. Um, I think also this, this goes back to the, the lush landscaping and the evergreen shrubs um, that will be along the entire side buffer yard, excuse me, along the entire buffer yard 
um, to try and reduce so what, what you're allowed, what you're saying. Even though I think most of that is on my property, you have put flags, so part of it is on yours and part of it on mine. We have to have that drainage at my house or it's going to be flooded. Sure. We would and pick I'm up. talking about a foot of water in the 24 So, so no. I, we want to answer these questions, and if you want to send me an email to make sure we address them, that's fine. I would like to get an answer. I okay, I understand that, and my job is to make sure other people here also get to make a question or a comment. Do you have a, I, I understand that, and I regret that this is frustrating, and I think there are other people that want to say something. Well, I'll say something. I mean, I think you should have talked to him before. I mean, he's got 24 years of history, and you didn't discuss this with him about the history of the neighborhood? <laughs> we, we've also just said that we are, we'd be happy to talk to him afterwards if he doesn't want to. And, 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 excuse me, hang, hang on one second, please. Please. This is also... I mean, you are already trying to rough shot thousands of people here for one man. At least you could do is talk to one man over there before you went to the zoning commission. Hold on, that's a little unfair. We, no, it's not. Okay. okay. I understand that you're frustrated. There's one man. I understand that, that you're Pierce frustrated, and one person is trying to talk, and we are trying to one answer man his questions. Over all these neighbors. So Brooks Pierce has made the choice that they're going to stick with one man over this whole community that doesn't want this here. And she didn't do her homework because she didn't talk to him. That is not true. History. That is not true. Did Again. she talk to him? Yeah. We don't have an obligation to go. talk to everybody. There you go. I misspoke. I misspoke. That is my. I apologize. I. I apologize. Oh, I've seen billions of dollars worth of business and and and, and, and billing fees, and I'm really pissed off at you. That's not. I, I am sorry. What are we? Are all, all of us? Did we just fall off a turnip truck? Do you think that we don't know what's going on? Why? Why is this street lined up the side? Okay, so twenty years to be repaired by the city, and so what you're talking about here is not right. And we need answers. Everybody here would like to have those answers. I, I think we'd be happy to, to answer some of the stormwater issues. I, the issue at this point, I believe, is this is a meeting to talk about zoning. And the, the storm drainage design has not occurred yet and cannot occur until we get much deeper into the design. Until, until you fill in my street. We, I, I am legally not allowed, and the city will review and approve the plans. I cannot fill in your the you swale next to your house. I, I, I'm Are going you going to leave the drainage there from both the yards? Are you going to leave the collection chambers in the middle of the front of this yard, of the yard there? I don't, I don't know yet because I haven't graded it yet. Next to my yard, there's going to be eight residences. I mean, I don't know. You know, I, and I realize we're getting three blocks together, but that's one. Absolutely, yes, and we're working with that with him. Yes. May I say one thing along those lines, real quickly? I believe the reason there's frustration about not having the answers is because in the first meeting, Glenn Drew, when asked about these concerns, said, it's not my concern. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the, That's the, what the said trust issues you know. And so I just wanted to put that out there. I was at that June 28 meeting and I don't recall when we were saying Shame on us. He said that over and over. Shame on you. All right. How can you go this? Hold on one second. I was just going to say, what what Corey was just saying is, we're required in the in the planning and development of this site to deal with the stormwater issues, including the stormwater issues that you're talking about. This is something you knew you didn't know about. We did know, you, no, you, you, didn't. you discussed the same thing at the June, at the June 28th meeting. What she said, she 
she said process. that they've okay. got to go through the process. I, they haven't done their due diligence yet. Okay, what she so said was... they can't fairly represent their clients' costs and expenses on the project if they've not done their this due diligence. Is, this is a meeting about zoning, and what she said was that we cannot tell you exactly what kind of stormwater management we will put on the site until we get through this zoning process. If both now, you know those that, bio cells don't work that like doesn't, they do because that I, doesn't mean, I work with you on a project That doesn't that. That mean that we won't be able to meet your need. We just don't know how we're going to do no, that yet. Bulldozing halt, and you're moving ahead as if nothing's going to stop I you guys. promise this person over here they can... We, uh, we, I, we disagree with that. To offer, uh, you know, something to the neighborhood as a compromise. Okay. And I think that's what people are asking for. We, Send we, your property we, back. We did that. We did that in the wake of the June, in the wake of the June 28 meeting. I've had numerous conversations with the community's attorney, Marsh Prouse, and and this. No, you guys moved right ahead. No, no. We did move right ahead. We, we, we tried to negotiate, and we came back with two four less units. That's all you gave us. That, that's not all we gave no, you. No, it's a PUD also. It's a PUD also. Yeah. We, so, not, that wasn't very much that you, you conceded. That, that, there was a great deal that we conceded. This plan is dramatically no, different. We gave you 16. We at June 28, at June 28 meeting. We can put 16 units on the existing though. No, we or gave 30. you 16 conditions that yeah. the, these 1,200 people voted on, and you, I think you agreed to two out of 16. No. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. You can build 13 homes on that same property. Right. Okay, we've got two more questions I want to get to. Again, I understand that there is a disagreement on whether or not this is a problem. The points that we have as a community that needs to be brought to light, and I would like to hear your response. Well, the response to that is that we, I have personally met with Marsh Prouse on numerous occasions and we worked out together the plan that we submitted uh, on the, we withdrew the original. That, that, that's not true. That's really not true. I think Marsh, I know that you didn't work with Marsh Prouse and that you didn't that, uh, like, uh, we're not going to take up this time. This gentleman has some questions. I understand that you feel that you've worked with Marsh on this. We've worked with Marsh on this. We've had communications with Marsh. Marsh has been communicating to our points of view, through him, to you, to Mr. Drew, and those points have not been met. And so let's stop with the Marsh and, and you working with Marsh, because that did not happen. And no. let's move on. You're not going to answer Nikki's question. You're not going to answer Al's question. So why don't we, we, we are this? We are trying to answer the question. I, I understand you that you're trying to answer, but uh, you're yeah. 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 talking about the world. And we're yeah. not getting anywhere. Yeah. And so why don't we move yeah. on I heard to another question. Move on. Yeah. Okay, so we have 45 minutes. Move on. We want to continue to meet people's questions. This is a meeting about zoning. I regret that there are frustrations we cannot meet because this group has different priorities than other people. But we want to address your zoning questions. That is what we are here for. Well, I think if you, I think if you drive within the, within two surrounding miles, in just about every yard in every house in Hamilton Lake and everywhere else, there's a sign that says no rezoning. And I yeah. What in the name of God is that? I mean, this is like destructive density for our development. Not gentle density. I have a home in front of Lake Euphemia. Why would I care about low budget housing in my development? And why would I care about people putting their car in my street when they come to an activity? When there isn't even spots for cars there now? Why? Today, at 9 o'clock, there was a broken school bus in the middle of West Street, of, of our main drive there. Cars were piled all the way to <coughs> Friendly Center because of one broken school bus. How can we keep putting 
more and more and more development and housing in this area. That is just, in my view, fundamentally wrong. And it should never be approved. Yes, sir. So you have basically uh, at least 88 or 90 cars coming in out of one exit entrance. Is that right? Correct. All right. That seems to me obvious that it's going to impact traffic along friendly avenue. Enormously. Enormously. Yeah. Enormously. And it's already a street where people go very fast. Yeah. Number two, has anything been discussed in terms of uh, how it impacts the schools? You say, for example, this is going to be for uh, empty nesters. Young, and young professionals and empty nesters. Are you going to rent it out? out? We have no way of knowing. Exactly. There's never any talk about how it's going to impact the schools, who's going to take care of the taxes for that, how in the traffic along there already is bad. And I go with him. It's, how, it's just money, right? Because how can you, as a company, dare to put something in that nobody wants? Well, we're, we are we are complying. We are endeavoring to comply with the uh, land use plan for the city of Greensboro, which contemplates additional infill development. Mr. 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 But you guys, you gotta let him answer. Okay. Okay. We're gonna do questions and answers. Yes, sir. Can I ask my question? Yes. All right. Before I say that, I just want to say that the landfill program for 2040 is generic. Just because it's there that says you can do it doesn't mean that you should do it or that you should do it here. And so my question is, actually I have two questions, is why is it necessary to change the complexion of the community when all these people are against this? Why do you have to change the, the and put this development right here in a, in a community as stable with single family homes to have high density. Why is it so important to you? Why can't you just put in homes, sell them, let them take the money from that, and go and build this someplace else? We, 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 believe, this is, we believe this is an attractive development that will <laughs> and also add to the, the much needed housing stock in the city of Greensboro. Is there another question or comment? Uh, you've already spoken, so I'm going to give it to this person right here. Thank you. I, I have a two-part question. All right. So the access is on Friendly. Correct. Friendly heading west. 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 Correct. So my first question is, based on your proposal, when I get on Friendly, how do you want me to get to Friendly Shopping Center? Yep. Like you you oh. How am I getting to Friendly Shopping Center? You're going to turn right out of uh, on West Friendly Avenue, and you're going to go to the stoplight at Kemp Road West, and you're going to make a U-turn and come back. That will work if I'm going shopping at Friendly Shopping Center. If I have a medical emergency. <laughs> Can any emergency vehicle make a U-turn at that stoplight, Ooh. sir? No. no. Can any emergency vehicle make a U-turn at that stoplight? I don't, I don't, I don't. They can't. They can't. <laughs> so, in an emergency, he's either going to go down West Camp and head back, because West Long is headed east, so is Cone. Or, he's going to make a right on Camp mm -hmm. and circle back around. Okay. And this is a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. And second case. That, that's, that's true of the houses that are located in that section of West Friendly Avenue now. They have, but unless, and that is true. Okay. That's right. the way the city of Greensboro's transportation department designed the road to work. Okay. How many houses are between 
whole thing. Okay, okay. Okay, again, I'm going to try and give everybody, I'm going to try and give everybody at least one opportunity. Yes, sir, in the back, green jacket. Thank you. It is disappointing that Mr. Drew is not here tonight. If you want to work out something, people have to come to the table. But he's not even a neighbor, so I would like to talk to you four, since I have to believe one of you lives in this neighborhood. Can you tell us why you believe this is a good project for our for your neighborhood and ours? Which one of you lives here? I'm, I'm in Westerwood. I'm in Westerwood and there's lots of development that's been proposed for Westerwood. I understand that. I understand that. And you asked me why this would be good for your neighborhood. No, I asked for our neighborhood. Okay. That's right. For you. Respectfully, ma'am, you don't live here. If you don't want my opinion because I don't I live here, that's fine. I do not. None of us. No, no, we don't want your opinion. Okay, I was just clarifying. He asked me who is not. No, he said lives in this neighborhood. So if you have somebody here tonight who is in the neighborhood who is willing to tell us, guys, here's why we need to rally around this. Let's hear from them. Listen, I don't know that this is something that we're going to all be able to get behind. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ready for you ready for if you're against this? If you're against this, raise your hand, please. Do you think we're for this? Good if you're for it, raise your hand. If you're for it, raise your hand. Hell okay. no, they're not. We understand that everyone in this room does not want to be here and doesn't like this proposal. We were not here to change minds. We understand that. We are trying to get questions and comments, and I am writing down all the ones that I can on what it is that is so concerning. And at the same time, there are differences of opinion. Are there any other questions or comments? Yes, ma'am, in the black. Okay, so the first meeting of Glen Drake, Glen Drake said that he had done all the great. I want to see data. I, I'm a data person too, and clearly I don't need this microphone, but. Um, I will say that in reviewing the Greensboro 2040 Comprehensive Plan, which you're right, has some generalities to it, Greensboro conducted surveys of what people are looking for. You can read it there, and if you'll send me your email address, I will send you citations. Why haven't you discussed that here? Because what if, what if they don't get rented? What if nobody rents it? And who here can be five plus wants to rent? Not a two story. He wants to rent. One of, some of them will be single story. They will be offered for rental and for purchase, and they will be maintained by an HOA. Are there other questions or comments? Yes, sir, right here. I'd like to comment, yeah. maybe ask a question of everybody. Is everybody aware that on November 5th, the planning department has voted to recommend that this be approved yes. to the yes. commission? Yes. So I just want everybody to be sure they're aware of that because do you need to listen to these questions? Are you going to do anything about these questions since you know approval's coming already? We, we don't know if approval is coming. That's the planning staff that you're talking about. We still have to go to the Planning and Zoning Commission, and then we have to go to the City Council after that, regardless of what the vote of the Planning and Zoning Commission is. But have the streets so, been approved? Y'all said earlier that the street layout has already been approved. That, that is a requirement of the LDO that we run the, the street layout. Tori can speak to this better than I can. By GDOT and the, the fire. No. By GDOT and the fire and safety. We don't have an official approval yet. The official technical review committee approval would only come after we get, if we were to pass the rezoning, we would go ahead and finish the construction documents, submit that to the City of Greensboro Technical, Commu technical Review Committee for review and approval officially. What we did do is to make sure that this development would work is I sent it informally via an email to both GDOT and the fire department. They made comments, I addressed those comments so that when I do a final approval or a final submittal, it will be able to be approved. Okay, the woman in the back with the turtleneck? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So you made reference um, during your presentation about the village um, at Windsor Park. The village at Windsor Park has an R5 designation. The R5, each of the lots, the R5 would say it would be a 0.2 uh, tenths of an acre lot size. Most of those lots are either 0.3 or 0.4 with a handful being 0.2, hence the R5 designation. 
would you be willing to make the lot sizes mirror the lot sizes at the village at Windsor Park, therefore decreasing the amount of density in on the court to roughly between 15 and 16 homes? Would that be something that you'd be willing to do? That's not economically viable for me. Oh. <laughs> Um, you said some will be rentals and some available for purchase? No, all, all will be rentals. Okay, so is it one yes, company that that's renting it out or will they be sold to individuals no, no, who will return no, rental? No, no they, will, they, will, they will all be rented by CZS Development Company initially, but they, they will be built so that they could be sold at any point in time. You can't get to answer. The, the yeah. zoning right here on the floor? Okay, as, as rentals, and this is a zoning issue, what is the zoning of who can rent there? So is it possible that all these people coming from the southern border that they're paying $300 a night in Manhattan hotels will end up being able to rent here and having the government pay for it? So no. <coughs> what's the zoning on <laughs> and all? <laughs> That's, that's not going to happen at $3,000 a month rental. You're paying 9000 right now. <laughs> well, no, that's not, that's not going to happen. Questions from, yes? We believe you. <laughs> My question concerns the traffic pattern of this neighborhood emptying onto Friendly. Several years ago, when the median was put into the Friendly Avenue, it, uh, it greatly changed the traffic accessibility from the south side of Friendly, where I live, and I know it must also impact the north side of Friendly, which is where the new development will be. The only way that I can make a turn, uh, the, the, the way that most of us are having to make a turn into the traffic from the south side is to go out Rodman. Right. Rodman is approximately very close within a block of this outlet from your neighborhood that you're proposing. It's a difficult, it's a difficult turn to make because when the traffic line changes in either direction, you have to wait for all those cars to go by. It's also having there are also U-turns occurring at that intersection, and I think it's uh, when we are talking about another. 20 to, to 40 cars that are going to be using that in two times a day, in the morning and the afternoon, uh, it's going to be a greatly increased uh, <coughs> traffic issue. Uh, Greensboro once was a, a sleepy little town. There wasn't much traffic on Friendly. It's a major thoroughfare today. There is very heavy traffic in both directions. That. It is going to greatly inconvenience people on both sides of Friendly and, in fact, impact the, the traffic situation on Friendly coming from the west and the east to have this larger development there. I think more consideration has to be given to this, and if the city is thinking about, oh, it's just another street entering into Friendly, they're not considering the volume and the impact it's going to have on this neighborhood. What I, what I can tell you is that, that Friendly Avenue is a major thoroughfare and it carries more than 20,000 cars a day. And, and the, uh, the GDOT does not regard this as being a material increase in the traffic on Friendly Avenue when you're talking about perhaps if you figure 22 homes and figure two cars for each of those homes twice a day, you're talking about maybe 80 trips a day roughly. And um, in addition to the more than 20,000 trips that are already being made on Friendly Avenue, so it's not it's not something that we even have to uh, to uh, file a, a traffic impact study for. I'm really not concerned about how it affects Greensboro. I'm concerned about how it affects my family, our families, our neighbors. It's going to greatly inconvenience us. And it's a, it's a and we, diminishing we, of our... We and the planning staff in the city of Greensboro don't believe it will be a material increase in the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question number one. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so...
Right. So I'm at 108 Elgin Place in Greensboro. Um, for the record, is Mr. Drew willing to consider the 100-foot setback that has been requested numerous times to him? No. Okay. Is Mr. Drew willing to reduce the density of this project? Mr. Drew has reduced the density of this project from 26 okay. to 26. So besides, besides 26, my 12-year-old can do this math, by, by the way, 26 to 22 besides reducing the number of units for and changing this to a PUD, what has really been accomplished between Marsh Prouse, our representative, and you since June the 28th when we first had this conversation? Yeah, what did you negotiate? The, the, this plan that we presented to you tonight. So, 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 but my question, I'm, I'm not, Bo, you've been in the business a lot longer than most of us, so I'm just trying to figure out four units less on the same amount of land and you now you're putting this into a package called a PUD. What has changed to help Al with with his property next door to help a thousand people that have signed the petition or we more? Mean, what has changed besides the four units we, and it being packaged as a PUD? We've, in, we've increased the, set, the setbacks, we've increased the planting yards, we've agreed to much more dense uh, vegetation. When we, you say you increase the setback, you, you're, you're, the average home is in the 80 to 100 foot range. No, this is I'm, 30. I'm talking about the setbacks from the adjoining neighborhood. Okay, the buffer. Yeah. Okay, oh, okay, got it. But as far as the setback goes, it is he's not willing to increase that back to 100 feet as of, as of tonight? No. Okay. And, and in fact, that's not the setback that's, uh, that's followed by the village of Windsor. Okay. Um, so one, one last question. What's the, would Mr. Drew, I know he's out of country or out of town or he's not here tonight, would he be willing to agree to a continuance from my, my team and this whole group of, to continue the November 20th date? To what end? To, to negotiate and to actually, he hasn't been willing to negotiate much at all. I've been part of this for about four months with a lot of input, studies, a lot of money that we've paid Mr. Prouse to negotiate with you, but I don't feel like there's been any negotiating other than, I mean, maybe we gave you 16 conditions. I think you came back agreeing to two out of those 16. It's my opinion that Mr. Drew has no inclination to negotiate whatsoever. Based on my time with him at Beth David and the last four months I've lived negotiating through Marsh Prouse. So would you tell me what kind of negotiations we have made in the last four months i'm still i'm still unclear about that well, i just thought i just told you we've we've increased the setbacks we've increased the planting yards we've increased increased the amount of plantings we've increased the uh fenestrations and design elements in the, in the property we have added provisions for at least 70 percent wood glass brick stone and uh, cementitious materials on the building facades we have I increased the the uh the uh, uh, bio retention cells to, I mean to, to try and save trees and so forth right but but spot this spot zoning has not nothing has changed in my the incompatibility 
and the spot zoning that is that is being ramrodded down all of these people's well, that that has not well, changed. That, the, the word spot zoning has been kicked around in your on your website and on the on the social media. We do, we don't believe, and the city of Greensboro's planning staff doesn't believe this is spot zoning. Oh. <laughs> so how is this? How does this fit in with Wait, the usual sir, customary use of sir, all the homes there? Sir, I got you a take couple a look people, at their 100 foot setbacks, already asked. and they're absolutely refusing to abide by that. How is this a negotiation, or how are you trying to accommodate the community with this? We, you're, it's, you know, there is no, there is no accommodation. There is no reason. To, to do this, why is, are you, why is Mr. Drew so set about doing this one development in this particular spot that, by the way, and this may be a question for her, looking at the plan requires the entire place to be graded, and you're not going to save any trees, and, you're gonna, and you said that, you came back to us and said you're going to plant four foot trees, now you say it's eight foot trees? You're taking down mature trees that are 35 feet, 40 feet tall, and replacing them with stubs? But that's beside the point. Why is it that you absolutely refuse to conform to the community and what everybody wants? It's called profitability. Well, of course, but... Why does one guy come in and... Again, we, we, Mr. Drew, this is the property that Mr. Drew and his fellow family members in the Saba family have inherited from Mr. and Ms. Saba. And this is a, a plan that that they envision for the property, which we believe will be an attractive addition to the housing stock in the city of Greensboro. Okay, gentlemen in the back and the, the vest. Plan, planning staff in the city of Greensboro. Three thousand people disagree. Yes, sir. In the vest. Thank you. That's very good point. Uh, just following up on that regarding landscaping and uh, what the existing tree canopy is, and Tori, this is something. Two-part question. First of all, you made the comment during the presentation that Glenn or CCS is going to preserve as many of the existing trees as possible. Uh, but that really means he doesn't have to save any trees. Right. Uh, right. The plan, That's true. Seen it for you, you've looked at the site plan along the Friendly Avenue side boulevard in that 100-foot setback that exists now. How many of the existing trees are going to be saved with the current plan that's been developed? You know, I haven't designed the plan yet, so I can't give you a, an exact number of trees that are going to be saved. Um, what we're looking at is a couple of different options. First of all, because this is a um, attached development, we are required to save at least 5% of the site in <laughs> tree. <laughs> at least, okay. <laughs> If we were doing detached homes, we could take down every single tree on the site according to the ordinance. So there is a, by making this a, a PUD and a attached development, there are regulations for tree preservation that are not applicable to detached homes. So at least 5% has to be saved. Looks like there's, um, there's heavy trees along the front that we could save. There may be a pocket of trees in the northwest corner that could be saved. Um, what we have talked about potentially doing is, if the grades work for it, putting a grass biocell inside the, um, the, the green element in the center, and then doing a smaller secondary planted biocell uh, on the other side of the, the loop road that we're creating so that that way we would have less impact on the trees instead of doing one big biocell, potentially doing two. So going back to uh, the original comment about willingness to negotiate with this community to find solutions that are better than what's being put out there, why can we not have this conversation to find a solution and give us time to work together to find a solution that would we at least find, because right now there is no, has been no compromise. I know what you said, though, but those are my news. You're missing the big points of what we need to have here. And I think we can find a, a way that we can compromise on this. But there has been nothing that's come back. Yeah, that's no rezoning. <laughs> and, and just to follow up to the questions I asked previously, on the buffer setbacks or the landscape that you have on the side yards and the back rear yard area, 
How tall are this package typically going to be? I need to get my notes. I don't know that off the top of my head. Sorry. Sorry, I'm good to hear. Well, yeah, we got it. Yeah, thank you. All right, minimum mature height of 15 feet, minimum. Mature, mature, mature height. They'll have, they'll have a minimum height of eight feet at installation. Um, shrubs will have a minimum mature height of six feet and a minimum height of three feet at installation. I mean, would you consider taking a look at what are these? minimum size of tree or maximum size factors that we could save on this property as opposed to saving smaller trees but some of the nice big trees on this property that we could save some of those would you be willing to work with this group especially in that boulevard the hundred foot setback along the friendly avenue we, that is, that is the charge that we have from mr drew to try and save as many trees in the in the design and construction of this development particularly there are some trees in the southeast corner of the development, for example, along Friendly Avenue that Mr. Drew would very much like to say, which is why Tori's talking about putting a bio-retention uh, cell in the center grassed area. Can you, can you mark those and put those in the request so that it makes it, because what you're saying means nothing if it gets zoned, you can do whatever you want. So That's right. You mark it, put it in the zoning, and uh, in, the, in the request, in the pod, so that it becomes the agreement. Uh, no, no, we can't do that. Um, and no, no, we can't, because we can't do that until the, the design has been finalized on the development, and we can't do the design until we first get the, get the rezoning. That's a good point. Your, your application shows your proposed location of the biofilm. That proposed location is right in front of Friendly Avenue. Let's push it back. Let's propose that it be pushed back. Let's engineer to that. But it's in a low spot. The low right, spot but you can friendly. engineer to it. it. It's the most it economical up. place. No, no, the that's, the, that's, that's not out. the most possible. That's the spot that is required by the city of Greensboro Planning not, Department. In that is not true. So so putting in the UDP, that we have to go in a low spot. The bio cell cannot go up to water can't go up You can to engineer the site. You have an engineer the site. But you're proposing to put it right in friendly For avenue. purposes of, of submitting an UDP to the city of Greensboro under the LDO, we have to put it in the low spot. Okay, I've got two questions so over here. Gentlemen in the jacket. The reason we're gathered here is so that you can check one of your boxes to say you had a community yeah. meeting. Yeah. 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 That, 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 that is not true. We, Obviously, you're not working with no the community. We are. Uh, listen, I, I've had. It's dictation. I've had. No, I've had. Yes, it is. I've had. Let him speak. Let him speak. I spoke with Mr. Prowse this afternoon, your attorney, and invited him to the meeting here tonight. And he told me that he, that he had not been invited by his clients to the meeting tonight. Oh, that's oh, not that he was. He also thanked me for my professional vision in dealing with him and that's the negotiation of this. Of that's this. very low five. That's that's true. That's not true. That's not true. That, that is true. It's true that we didn't invite Marsh Prouse here. That's, that's true. That's what he told that's us. That's what we what he told us. I don't know if that's well, what happened. I'll let Jimmy. Well, that. that is not what he said. He said that he felt that that he had other things going on, other cases, and he didn't feel like his time right now to argue with you in front of everybody. So he will be at the November 20th meeting, and we are in communication with him, and so I, I think that painting Mr. Faust in this light, that he has worked this plan out with you, with his approval, and you're insinuating no, his approval with this, um, does not sit well with, with any of us. I, I, what, I, what I'm telling you, ma'am, is that is that I've had multiple meetings and telephone conversations with Mr. Krause, and he has asked 
me for things on behalf of the community and I've said we can give you that or we can't give you that and we have talked about and, and he was in fact on the, on the conversation with me with the city of Greensboro planning staff when we elected to withdraw the original voting application and resubmit as a planned unit development which required us to, to instead of just amending our, our zoning application to go back and submit a new application after first submitting a unified development plan and I discussed all that with Marsh and Marsh thanked me for the professionalism that I had exhibited in talking with him about those things and he has I believe reported back to you on, on what the contents of this proposal would be before we submitted the new rezoning application. But what is your agenda in telling 300 people that we didn't invite him tonight? What's the agenda there, Bo? I'm, 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 Why did you even say that? Why would you even have to bring that up? Huh? Why would you, what was that all about? Why did you even bring I, that up? Because she's, she's saying that I haven't negotiated no, with No, you said friends. that before she even started answering to you. No, that's we, not true. The woman in the, the black sweater. Um, well, I just, I know that we've spent a lot of time trying to save the integrity of our neighborhood and I spent a lot of time answering that questionnaire that was sent out to all of us. Um, and, you know, I, I put a lot of thought into my answers and then I put a lot of thought into the rankings of the things that were most important to me. And I just was wondering, I don't know if I missed the results of that survey that was that actually live in Hamilton Lakes, Hamilton Forest, and Charmant Forest neighborhoods. And we, we did publish those results on the website, and I believe Nikki uh, Smith sent out an email to everybody, so they were done. Um, in addition to that, we shared that survey with, um, with Bo and his team, um, showing what was important. Bo uh, is telling us that he did negotiate some. Some of those were, like, for example, the vinyl siding. He took that off. Uh, for example, you know, the, the multifamily. We didn't want the multifamily. They changed their request from an RM8 to a HUD, which does take off the, um, the multifamily precedent is now removed because it, <coughs> they're not requesting multifamily, they're requesting a HUD. Um, so was that, I'm sorry, that so was that kind of a way to Start the issue and get what I'm not. Want. I'm not going to respond on, on the the reasoning between changing from an RMA to a HUD. I'll leave that to um, CCS as attorneys. Um, there were things on that list that they did accommodate. The top four things on that list, they didn't, and I think that that's why we're all upset right now. Is that the things that were negotiated were not the super important things. You know, it was, we're talking about the density, that the density, we're upset about the density, we're upset that um, it doesn't fit in with the neighborhood, that the context of this development doesn't fit with, with the neighborhood existing around it. Those are the things that are upsetting, and that's what I'm hearing around here. Um, you know, the traffic, the rentals, all of that, it's a non-issue. It doesn't have anything to do with zoning. What has to do with zoning is the density, is the context, it's the setbacks. It's the, the, the greenery and the space in between Mr. Bungie's home and Windsor Park. We're talking about that's what's important, that's what's with the zoning, and all of these other things, yes, they upset us, but they don't have anything to do with zoning. Yeah. Um, and those top things, those top three or four things on that survey <coughs> that we submitted back to the team, that's what we're upset about. And I think that to focus in and to say, yes, this is what we're upset about, is not only gonna help us as a community, but I really feel it's gonna help Bo relay this back to Glenn and to be able to say, they are upset about the density. They are upset about the setbacks. They are upset about the space in between the neighborhoods. Yes.
He's inherited this wonderful land. Why doesn't he build his own house there? We'd make great neighbors. <laughs> I mean, really, why does he have to build something there for profit? Yeah, it's all for money. And that's not, that's not well, being human. That could, that could be said of the original developers of Hamilton Lakes and Stormout Forest. Yes, sir, in the jacket. I think I know Mr. Drew's intentions. He's going to build them, he's going to fill them, he's going to flip them. He's going to sell them to somebody, he's not going to manage them within a year. Right. If all he wants to do is sell them, has there been any consideration to recreate like a Windsor Park? Individual homes, not rental homes. I think you know, people would be a lot more content with doing something like that than building apartments. Or Dunkirk, <laughs> Dunkirk or another subdivision, yeah, yeah I mean, another just, cul-de-sac. Instead of apartments, just build them as condos yeah. or individual yeah. homes, patio homes. They are, not, they are not apartments, they are townhomes. There is a significant difference, and, and you can't, under the, under the City of Greensboro zoning ordinance, whether they're rental or for sale is not an issue. And you'll find when you go before the Planning and Zoning Commission and the City Council that they won't entertain questions about that. It's also, it's also a market reality. I mean, right? We all know how hard it is to sell right now with interest rates going up. So, people paying 3000 yes. Last question in the in the uh, back. I want to know: Are you happy with what you've received from this crowd tonight about your development? Am I happy? No, no, I'm obviously not happy about the response I've received from this crowd tonight. Then are you willing to postpone and come back to the community? with some more information. We've answers the questions we made tonight and plans for something that's right for our neighborhood. The, the short answer to that question is we're not willing to again continue the, the rezoning request. We we have already withdrawn our original rezoning application, negotiated with your attorney on the things that we would and wouldn't do to change our, our plans, and we, we are now scheduled to go before the Planning and Zoning Commission on November the 20th, and you will have the opportunity there to, to address your concerns to the Planning and Zoning Commission. This is not a conversation between attorneys. It's a conversation we're trying to make with you developers who want to cram in stuff that the neighborhood does not want and you're not listening <laughs> okay, I live on I, I live at the, at the corner of overlook and Madison Avenue and in, in Sunset Hills and I um, um, live one one block away from Mad uh, from Market Street on one side. Did answer my question? One what block. Is your backyard? I would I would not object to this development in my backyard. Uh, <laughs> you want your value of your home to go down? I I don't want the value of my home to go down. I don't. What's going to happen to us? I don't believe the value of your home is going to go down oh, because right. of this development. Why is that? Hmm? Because I think as we we've stated previously. It's an attractive addition to the to the neighborhood and to the housing stock of the city of Greensboro. Okay, y'all. Again, we've got our email addresses that we put up. You're welcome to send additional questions and comments. I'm Jamie Bo. Thank you for coming tonight. I understand that you are invited to stay after if you want to continue to meet as a group. But we are going to close up the neighborhood meeting portion with CCS Development. Thank you. For those of you that are still here, as soon as they're done, we would like to talk about the next step next Monday. Have 10 or 15 minutes to talk to us. We want to talk to you about our side of the story.